Mark Bailey from Fig Securities on this. Mark, hello to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, I mean, if we take in this number sort of in its in its whole, the headline figure was not so great. Earnings growth was was good. Um, I mean, where's the where's the Goldilocks figure in the middle that is just right? Yeah, good morning, Natalie. I mean, I think exactly uh, correct that in terms of the headline and, and then the, um, the the wage inflation. I guess in terms of the, uh, there's a bit of weakness in terms of the uh, average uh, weekly hours worked, which came in a bit softer at uh, 34.3 rather than 34.4. And also that uh, unemployment rate did tick up to 4.7, but largely driven by an increase in participation rate as more people you know, came back into the workforce and started to uh, consider looking for jobs as well. So, you know, I think in terms of the, the Goldilocks scenario, I think if we were pretty close to it there, maybe the Fed would have liked to have seen a, a stronger headline jobs figure. Uh, I think in terms of that hike in the first quarter, I think we're pushing it. I think the market is pricing in around about a one in four, 25% uh, chance of a hike by March. I think that's probably about, be about right. I mean, a lot of commentators are saying, look, let's really focus on that uh, you know, wage inflation, the wage growth figure of 2.9, as you rightly correct, uh, they point out it's the highest since 2009. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that will worry the Fed, but I don't think it will do um, sufficiently enough for them to kind of uh, jump in and, and start hiking uh, a lot quicker than the market consensus, which is at around about three for the entire uh, year of 2017. And that, in terms of you know the comments on on the uh, on the data, you had uh, Cleveland uh, Regional Fed President Loretta uh, Mester talking about the figures and saying, look, they're pretty much in line with uh, what uh, they were expecting uh, at the FOMC. You know, the median consensus is is for those three hikes during 2017. And she's actually kind of a, a slight hawk in terms of where she sits in, on on the Fed on the FOMC scale. And she's actually saying, look, you know, I, my forecast, my own individual forecasts are for probably slightly more than three in 2017 but as always you know it's always data dependent and I'm, I'm not sure that we'll even get to two during 2017 I just don't think the data will be there and especially in the first quarter uh, once Trump is inaugurated uh, later in January you know it'll take time for his policies and his fiscal stimulus to work through the system and I think the Fed you know will be uh, probably keen to sit on its hands unless it does see a huge spike in inflation and those jobs uh, data kind of continue to be a lot stronger than the market expectations are. Well, on that note, I mean, you commented on uh, Loretta Mester's comments coming through, but we've also had some Fed talk coming through from some of the other policymakers as well that I just wanted to guide viewers through. And Chicago Fed President Charles Evans, one of the Fed's most dovish policymakers, saying, I still think two moves is not an unreasonable expectation, but it's going to depend on how the data rolls out. And if it's just a little bit stronger, three is not going to be implausible. Uh, meanwhile, Fed Reserve Governor Jerome Powell said on Saturday, low rates can lead to excessive leverage and broadly unsustainable asset prices, things that we watch carefully for and do not observe at this point. Um, so certainly messaging coming through from the Federal Reserve there. Um, what would you take really from policymakers' stance at present? Oh, I, look, I think that, it, you know, as in all those comments, it's data dependent. I'm probably more on the Evans scale in terms of a bit more dovish in terms of maybe maybe we get to two, but you know again it's, it's data dependent and you know there's a lot of potential volatility, uh, especially surrounding Trump uh, and also the elections in Europe to throw spanners in the works as well. You know I guess the the market is pricing in and assuming um, that everything goes to plan, but you know there's always. Uh, you know, events that occur uh, out of the left field that uh, we haven't really expected or predicted. And, you know, there's a lot of political, um, I guess, uh, challenges and uncertainty ahead, especially in Europe um, coming forward as well. And, you know, in terms of what the ECB does as well, will play into partly what the Fed has to do in terms of the, the dollar strength and how it will protect uh, U.S. firms in terms of further dollar strength and the weakness there in terms of their exports versus imports. And, you know, the impact of, of Trump's potential trade policy as well and how all that plays out. So there is, you know, probably more uncertainty. I know we talk about it all time and time again. There's probably more uncertainty moving in, in 2017 in terms of the geopolitical uh, aspects than uh, economic uh, this year. But this, this year is certainly the case, especially with Trump, who, who is such a, an unknown in terms of what he will actually manage to achieve and the actual impact of those potential con, uh, policies on the actual real economy in terms of jobs growth and inflation. You know, I'm still a bit of a doubter in terms of whether we see, you know, real wage inflation coming through 
because of the fiscal spending and whether we actually see an increase in, in, in US inflation coming through as well. Um, you know, we didn't see that at all when you would have expected it with all the QE that was carried out by the central banks uh, post the GFC 2007, 2008 and onwards. Uh, and so, you know, fiscal p spending, I'm, I'm not sure. So, you know, I think that you'll see, you know, market participants um, positioning for uh, higher inflation. And you've seen that in terms of the yield curve reaction. And again, you know, the, the bond market reaction to those jobs figures on Friday was, was fairly hawkish in terms of that uh, the yields did increase uh, around about five basis points in the 10 years to, to 242, still kind of below the highs that we did see um, post the, the Fed hike in mid-December. Um, but again, you know, it, it's pointing to, you know, higher rates across the curve and probably some further steepening. But I think, you know, partway through the year, maybe the back end of this year, I think uh, you won't see that inflation coming through and you'll see some uh, market uh, investors starting to reposition for maybe some inflation that actually hasn't come through uh, against consensus. And it will be certainly be interesting to watch to see how the bond market and also the broader markets respond when we do hear from President-elect Donald Trump on Wednesday. Also, obviously followed up by U.S. Fed Chair Janet Yellen. We'll be hearing from her overnight on Thursday. So plenty of market movers still to come this week. Mark Bailey, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Natalie. Have a good one.